Hi. Now, if you were watching my earlier video tutorial on variable acceleration vectors, then I showed you that if we had the position vector r of a particle, which was equal to, say, some function of time, f of t in the i direction, plus another function of time, g of t, say, in the j direction, then the velocity v was equal to the rate of change of the position vector. In other words, dr by dt. And the acceleration vector a was equal to the rate of change of the velocity vector. In other words, dv by dt. Now, in this video, what I want to do is show you how we can reverse this effect that given the acceleration vector, we can work back to the velocity vector. And given the velocity vector, we can work back to the position vector. And because it's a reverse effect, it involves integration. So the velocity vector is equal to the integral of the acceleration vector with respect to time. And the position vector r is equal to the integral of the velocity vector with respect to time. Now to best illustrate this idea, what I've got here is a typical example that you'll likely to get. A particle p is moving in a plane so that at time t seconds its acceleration a equals 6ti plus 2j meters per second per second. And what we've got to do is find the position vector r after t equals 3 seconds. Given that when t equals 1 second v equals 4i minus j meters per second and r equals 2i plus 3j meters. So to do this what we need to do is first of all step back through this particular process. We've got the general acceleration vector so we can get the general velocity vector after time t by integrating our acceleration vector. So that's our starting point here. We've got that the velocity vector v is equal to the integral of the acceleration vector with respect to time. So if we just put that in brackets because we've got more than one term here, we're integrating 6t in the i direction plus 2 in the j direction and we're integrating that with respect to time. So if we integrate in the usual way then the integral of 6t is going to be to add 1 to the power, that's going to be 6t squared and divide by the new power 2. So you've got 6t squared over 2 which reduces to 3t squared. So you've got 3t squared in the i direction. Integrating the constant 2 with respect to time is going to give me 2t and that's in the j direction. Now this is where you've got to be careful. Don't forget that constant of integration. And that constant is now going to be a vector. So just do a squiggly line underneath that to illustrate that it's a vector. Now we've got to work out what that constant c is. And we turn to our boundary conditions which we know is that when t equals 1 the velocity v equals 4i minus j. So let's just write that in here that when t equals 1 we know that v equals 4i minus j. Now I'm going to need to substitute this into this equation here. So what I'll do is I'll call this equation 1. So if we substitute this into this equation, let's just write this in that we're sub this in, in 1, so sub in 1. If we do this, we now have 4i minus j for v, okay, equals, and now we're going to put 1 into the right hand side here. So we're going to have 3 times 1 squared, that's 3 in the i direction, so that's 3i. And then subbing t equals 1 into here just gives us 2 in the j direction. And we've got our constant of integration plus c. 
And if we now subtract 3i from both sides and subtract 2j from both sides, that will give us our vector c. So if we do that, we therefore have c equals 4i minus 3i, which is just going to be 1i or i, and then minus j minus another 2j, that's going to be minus 3j. So we've got our constant vector here. And all we need to do now is just substitute this into 1. So if we just say sub in 1, okay, I do believe it's a good idea to just give some indication of what we're doing. So if we do that, we've got our general vector v, so therefore v equals, and we've got 3t squared i plus 2gj, so 3t squared i plus 2tj, and then we've got to plus our constant vector plus c, which is i minus 3j, so plus i minus 3j. Now I wouldn't leave it like this, what I'd want to do is group up our components, our i and j components. So as far as i goes, we've got 3t squared plus 1i. So if I just put that in brackets as 3t squared plus 1, and that's all of i. And if we do much the same for the j components, we've got 2t minus 3 in the j direction. So we've got plus, and then in brackets, 2t minus 3 in the j direction. So what I need to do now is to work out what our general position r is after time t. And we can do that by integrating our velocity vector with respect to time. So we've got our velocity vector, so we can say that our position vector r is going to equal the integral of all of this with respect to time. Now I've got two terms here, the i term and the j term, so I need to put this all in brackets. So we've got 3t squared plus 1 in the i direction, and then plus all of 2t minus 3 in the j direction. And we'll just close that off and integrate that with respect to time. So integrating each of the components, integrating 3t squared respect to time just gives me 3t cubed over 3, which reduces to just simply t cubed. And then we've got the integral of 1 with respect to time, so it's going to be plus t, and that's our i component there. When we come on to the j component, 2t minus 3, integrating 2t, is going to give me 2t squared over 2, which reduces to t squared. And then the integral of minus 3 with respect to time is minus 3t. And that's our j component. And again, we mustn't forget our constant of integration, which I'm not going to call plus c again, because we've used c in the first part, and it could be a different constant. So we'll just call it, say, d and I'll put a squiggly line underneath that to illustrate that it's a vector. Now we're going to be using this equation later, so let's just number it number two. Now how do we get our constant of integration d? Well again, we've got to turn to our boundary conditions, and we know that when t equals one, the position vector r equals two i plus three j. So we can say that here, that when t equals 1, we know that the position vector r equals 2i plus 3j. And with this, we can substitute it back into equation 2. So if we just border this off, I'm having to do it quite tight here just so I can get this all on the one screen. So we substitute this into 2. So we just mention that here, sub in 2. And what does that give us? Well, we therefore have, for r, we've got 2i plus 3j, so therefore 2i plus 3j is going to equal, and then if we put 1 into here, we've got 1 cubed plus 1, so that's going to give me 2, 
So we've got 2i. And as for the j components, we've got 1 squared, which is 1, minus 3. That's going to be minus 2. So we've got minus 2 in the j direction. And then we've got plus our constant d. So to get d now, all we need to do is to subtract 2i from both sides. So 2i minus 2i, that gives us no i's. That's quite nice. And then just add 2j to both sides. So 3j and 2j gives us 5j. So therefore, our constant vector d is going to be equal to 5j. Now with this, we can substitute this constant back into equation 2. So I'll say sub in 2. And if we do that, we therefore have that our general position vector r is going to equal t cubed plus t in the i direction. So just put that in brackets, t cubed plus t in the i direction. And then for the j components, we've got t squared minus 3t, but we've also got plus d, which is 5j. So we can group that all up as simply t squared minus 3t plus that 5 all in the j direction. Now we're nearly there. The question was to find the position vector r after t equals 3 seconds. So all we need to do is substitute t equals 3 into here. So if I say when t equals 3, we get that our position vector r equals 3 cubed plus another 3. That's going to be 27 plus 3, 30. 30 in the i direction. And then for the j component, when t equals 3, we're going to have 3 squared. That's 9 minus 3 times 3. That's another 9. 9 take away 9 is 0, just leaving us with 5 in the j direction. OK. And I'll just bracket that up because we're dealing with the position vector in meters. OK, so I hope that gives you some idea then how we can go about using these integration methods to work backwards and find our particular values. OK.